I started doing a renormalization for uh, rotations, and uh, I think uh, I was a little fast, and it's still it's also true that it's something that you need to sit down and do yourself, but I think I also was quite quick, and by the end, maybe uh, it wasn't very clear what was going on. So let me start uh, by reviewing something that I did at the end, but uh, also from a slightly different perspective. So I want to forget about the rotation for a second and just say, present this as an algorithm. So algorithm uh, for, let's say, some geometric conversion of the continued fraction. Geometric continued fraction. And of course, it's related to what we were doing yesterday, but I just want to see it as just as a combinatorial algorithm. So you start with an alpha in uh, zero, 01, and you plot so delta, ah, no, no, I need my notes again. Uh, OK, delta 0 is the interval 0 alpha, and delta 1 is the interval minus 1 plus alpha 0. And I0 is the union, delta 0, delta 1. A picture here, 0, alpha, minus 1, minus alpha. Delta 0. Oh, uh, I already did it wrong. Delta minus 1. I want this to be minus 1. Thank you for that. Delta minus 1. Okay. <coughs> so we take alpha, we build these two intervals, and I want to define now inductively intervals i n which are made by delta n union delta n minus 1. <coughs> Sorry, this chalk keeps breaking. OK, so uh, I have two intervals. And let me always remark that as n grows, the intervals become smaller. So there's always a big, a large, and a small. So in this picture, always delta n is the small interval, and the delta n minus 1 is the large interval. And the position of small and large flips with n. So if n, if I, let's do by case. Let's say if n, n is, uh, um, uh, uh, if n is even, What did we have? This is the picture we had there. If n is even, n was uh, 0. If n is even, then you have uh, the small is on the right. So uh, small on right. So we have delta n here and delta n minus 1 here. And what I want to do, I take the small, every time I take the small, and I cut the small from the opposite endpoint. OK? So here the opposite endpoint is to my left. And I start uh, cutting as many full copies as I can until I'm left with a reminder. OK? And so if you want, you can cut, 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 cut. <clears throat> so let me write it. Uh, start from, uh, and cut delta n from, in this case, the right end point, from the left end point, as much as possible. Call uh, delta n plus uh, 1 the reminder. Okay. 
So this little reminder is delta n plus 1. So you take the small and chop it from the opposite side. And if n is odd, the same, but uh, the picture is flipped. If n is odd, delta n is to the left. Delta n is left. And it's all that and it's from the left. So I need to cut it from the right. Okay? So cut from right. And the same. Okay, maybe this is already the reminder. <coughs> okay. So here there is no rotation, no nothing, it's an algorithm. You have two intervals, you cut the small from the left, you are left with the reminder, now the, the large becomes small and the small is the other and you do the opposite, you cut. Now the next step, you have the reminder and now you will cut the reminder from the opposite side. Then you have a new reminder and you cut the small reminder from the other side. And once you cut from the right, once you cut from the left, once you cut from the right, once you cut from the left. What does this have to do with rotations? And now, uh, let's connect it to yesterday. So if I look at the first, so, so uh, let, uh, let Tn be the uh, interval exchange, exchange of uh, delta n and delta n minus 1, OK? So this is just the map which they, uh, swaps the two intervals rigidly. So if you, it's a map, t to the n, it's a map from i n back to i n. And one is mapped to the opposite end and uh, red is mapped to the opposite end. And remark, if I look at T0, let's go back to T0. T0 has length, uh, I0 has length 1, and this T0 is nothing else than a circle cut open at alpha. And this map we already saw is just a rotation. So T0 is actually on, uh, uh, from I0 to I0. If I identify this one with a circle, uh, this is the rotation by alpha, our usual rotation by alpha, okay? So the claim is that uh, these maps that I'm building are actually induced maps of this original rotation on this sequence of shrinking intervals. And this is what we kind of uh, did in class, but also I ask you also in part to verify. So let me say proposition. This is again I'm recalling from essentially from yesterday. Tn is induced map. So first return map is the induced map of, of T0. T0, which is say equal to our alpha, which is a rotation opened up, on IN. Okay. I have my. So if you want, I have my original rotation, and then I have a sequence of nested intervals, which are becoming smaller and smaller and containing zero. And so if I induce my original map on this small interval, what I see is this Tn, okay? 
And now, uh, this is this idea of zooming. So I'm zooming on smaller and smaller scales. But now, if I want to renormalize, I need to open up this small interval. And uh, you can, uh, maybe you can do it at first. We can zoom it, and then we can glue it back to a circle. So maybe you can do it like this. And this, Irena suggests me I should draw. This is, you have your small interval. You have t to the n. And you can kind of zoom it and rescale it to length one. So if you rescale, so rescale IN to length one, to length one. So say you just multiply by one over the length. So you make it again length one. And these endpoints will be, actually this endpoint will be Gauss to the N of alpha. And this will be minus one plus Gauss to the N of alpha. This is what we, we, we showed, that the ratio between the two intervals is Gauss to the N of alpha. Rescale, and then if you want, you can glue, glue back to a circle. And what you see is a rotation by Gauss to the N of alpha. OK? Is it clear what I'm doing? I'm inducing, then making the map unit lengths and gluing it back. If you want, yesterday I said the opposite. I said here, you can glue this back to a small circle and then rescale the circle of length one. It's, it's the same in each order. Okay. 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 So let me say again. So this is the algorithm, and hopefully today it's more clear. Uh, we are not proving that it's the induced map, but you can just sit down and... And you did it in some sense yesterday yourself, if you did the exercise. And uh, let me re re recall you the idea, which is this idea of renormalization. So maybe you will not care about this specific renormalization for rotation in your, in your life, but in dynamics, there are many instances. The picture is kind of like this. You are interested in studying the rotation. And you consider the space of all rotations or you consider the space of all dynamical systems that you are of the type that you want to study. And in many examples, we did mostly entropy zero dynamical systems, in many examples there exists a, an operator. So let's say X is the space of rotations. And here you can identify actually the space of rotations with zero, one, because you can think that a rotation is given by the, the rotation number. So the space of rotation could be just the interval zero, one, thinking that each alpha is the rotation by alpha. And this renormalization is indeed this operator here that zooms and rescales. So the normalization is uh, induce, induce plus rescale. And in this case, induce plus rescale. So for us, so here, the renormalization uh, 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 of a rotation is really sending me to the rotation by Gauss to the N of alpha. So, so in, this, in this parameter, in the rotation number parameter, I'm doing the Gauss map, okay? Okay, this is. So some people apparently yesterday asked why uh, do we need to, f uh, why do we need to do from right once and from left another time? Couldn't I just, uh, when I rescale, I could also choose to flip the interval, and then I always cut from the right. So you can do that. It's perfectly legitimate algorithm, and it has some advantages to actually flip at every stage. But I like not to flip, at least this week I like not to flip, uh, because it, let me show you again the rotation picture. So. Because remember, in this rotation picture that we saw yesterday, what I'm doing, I'm inducing. So I'm 
first inducing on this yellow interval and looking at the Poincare map. Then I'm, when I'm doing this cutting from the right, cutting the red from the right, what I'm looking, I'm looking actually at first return map on the yellow interval of the rotation. So I need to look at iterates of the species to see when they come back. So this is, uh, how do I work? Does it work? This is, yes, is there a pointer? No. Ah, here it is. So maybe I'll go one back. Oh, sorry. So this picture, this is what we were doing in the algorithm. You see, you, I, I have, uh, I have the red and the, the red to the left and the green to the right. And I cut the red from the left of the green three times and I'm left with a reminder. And this is showing you what's happening on the rest of the circle. This is what's happening on the rest of the circle. When I'm cutting from the left, actually I'm inducing. So I'm rotating until I come back here and then I'm rotating until I'm coming back there. And then this is my new smaller interval with uh, Previously small and reminder. And then I do it again. So this is kind of cu cutting to the left. And then I have a smaller interval to induce and so on. So I'm inducing a rotation of smaller and smaller intervals. And when you do this induce, inducing, you will notice that actually you're, you're always rotating in the original picture uh, clockwise. But the induced map, once it's a rotation backward, and once it's a rotation forward. So the induced map is a rotation counterclockwise or clockwise alternating. It's kind of related to the fact that convergence of the continued fractions are one to the right and one to the left. So sometimes you overshoot, sometimes you undershoot. And when you undershoot, you have the effect of rotating back. So that's why I like to keep the flip because it kind of records this backward rotation every once in a while. Okay. But uh, I want to move one step farther. So I want to explain that not only we have an induced map, but we do have indeed some partitions of my original, no, uh, yeah. well, I have some partitions of my, the whole space to be, that I began with. So this is a general phenomenon when I do inducing. So let me tell you in general. Uh, Something, I want to tell you something about uh, uh, Kakutani or Rocklin Towers and skyscrapers. Okay. So, say that I have a function, a dynamical system from x to x, and uh, uh, assume that, what did I want to say? Uh, no, I want to hear. Yeah. I want to assume, maybe it's convenient to assume that uh, f is invertible, which would be the case for us. Let's assume that it's invertible. And then you remember yesterday, I, look, I can look at the subset, y, and assume that f of y from y to y, this is the first return map, or the induced map, is well defined. So that only means that every point comes back. X. Uh, so this means for every y, there exists n such that fn of y is back in y, for every y in y. And ry of n is the first return time. Then I can, I can look at the level sets of the first return time function. So I look at all points which take the same time to return. So let me define yn as uh, the set of y in y such that the return time to y 
of small y is equal to n. So these are the points that take time n to come, exactly times n to come back. Okay. <coughs> so then, uh, let me say as a fact, if you want, you can try to prove it as an exercise. It's a little bit like similar to the Poincaré recurrence exercise that Stefano left yesterday, but it's a little bit annoying to, to check. And you really want to use invertible. The fact is that I can write my space, x, my whole space, as the following union. I will write it and then I will give you a picture of this union. So I can write it as a union of n of the union from n from, sorry, union from n, union from k from 0 to n minus 1 of f to the i of y n. Okay, I'll draw you a picture of this because the picture maybe it makes it immediately clear what this means. Yes? Sorry, it's a union and actually the claim is that this is everything and also that the union is this joint. So everything that you see in this union, all these intervals are, all these sets are pairwise disjoint. It's a disjoint union. Okay, so every point falls exactly in one of those sets. So let me show you the picture. So the picture is that, maybe I'll draw you first uh, uh, flat, uh, sorry. So let me draw the first, you have my space x, and then you, maybe my space x is very big. <laughs> and then you have uh, y, and then I look at some portion of y, let's do it here, which comes back in time n. So this thing means that it will go out. And uh, this will be f of y n, this will be f square of y n. This thing will be out for exactly n minus 1 iterates and then will be back. So these iterates are here. So for each n, I take y n, and I translate, and I shift it exactly n times. And this will be, uh, uh? ah, I'm sorry, f to the k. Thank you. So as k goes from 0 to n minus 1, I look, so th this part is, uh, uh, So this part is what I'm drawing. I'm drawing, uh, these are the iterates which are out and then come back. And maybe let me draw it. And this, this part is actually called a tower, a dynamical tower. And there is a more visual representation, which is this one. Let's say your space, I'm representing it as an interval. And here I'm representing E1, E2, E3 dot 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 EN. So E1 uh, takes one iterate and then it's back in Y. Y2 goes out of my space for one iterate. So it goes out and I can represent it on top and then it comes back to Y. YN, Y2 goes out for twice and then it comes back. Yn goes out for n times, and then it comes back. I can kind of draw symbolically these sets as towers over Yn. So this is just, a, this tower just represents uh, the images which are out of Y, and then back. And the, the so okay, for larger and larger n. So th these things are called the towers. So, so uh, the union for k from 0 to n minus 1 of fk of yn 
is a tower. And uh, um, the union of towers, so the, this whole union is uh, many towers form, uh, uh, sometimes it's called, or this is called the Rockling Tower, or Rockling Tower, and uh, many towers form a Kakutani skyscraper. So basically, I'm inducing and I'm representing my space as towers up to the first return time, okay? So, and the, the claim is that the, the Kakutani skyscraper gives you all points in the space. Every point has to be either in a base or in one of the floors in one of these towers, okay? So I don't know, this, I'm trying to do a little bit of general dynamical system theory when I'm doing my specific example. So let's go back to the rotation and maybe it's more clear what everything is. So for example, when F is the rotation and Y is our interval IN, then we have only RY has only two values. We saw that it also ha only has two values, Qn and Qn minus one. The return time of, uh, uh, maybe I should say that x is I'm zero. And uh, y Qn is actually delta n minus one. And y, Qn minus one is equal to delta n. So there are only two intervals and one returns in time delta Qn and the other returns in times Qn minus one. So there are only two towers in my skyscraper. I, sometimes I see that people are confused. If you are confused, do you want me to ask? Okay. <laughs> And here we really have intervals, so we can really draw towers. So I can really draw uh, this picture. So this is delta n, this is delta n minus one. And really I can draw qn minus one copies of delta n on top. These are intervals. And then I can draw uh, and then I can draw Qn copies of the interval delta n minus one. Yes? Sorry, if? So I'm actually assuming that uh, the map is well defined, that all points come back to Y. Uh, ah, but then you will only have a unique tower for the return time. With, so some of these towers are gonna be empty. In that case, you have only one tower, which is the empty tower. The return time will be, uh, Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. So you are saying if uh, the, am I forgetting some assumption? If X is identity and Y is um, uh, some subset. Yes. Uh, uh, it's not invertible. It's not, I said, did I say invertible? Oh, yes. Um, what am I doing? What am I forgetting? Who can find? <laughs> um, uh, uh, yeah, maybe I need some kind of minimality or transitivity or some kind of, yeah, okay. For, for in the case of the rotation, uh, everything is fine because the orbits are dense. So this is uh, irrational rotation, yes. Sorry? But if the rotation is rational, um, 
by the way, this picture of the tower will still work, but at some point you will have indeed an identity tower. Um, uh, what is happening? Okay, let me think. I don't know. I might have missed some assumptions, so let me think. Yes? He's worried about if I take identity and uh, why to be some part of space. Uh, but I'm not spanning the all X. I'm not spanning X, right? So I cannot write X as. So there, there are, essentially, I think you're right. Essentially, there are points which will never return. And you have to put them somewhere in that picture. You have to add some part to space which is not swept. I think you need maybe to put an assumption like the map is sweeping or something like uh, that if you take the union of the images of Y, they contain X. So I think you're right. There's something, there is a, I, I, uh, I will double check what to add exactly, but I think he's right. So I, we need some assumption too. Yes? No, I really want to find X. I really want to record, and then that's why he's right that there is some issue. So I don't only want to find Y. I mean, certainly I can, yeah. Y is just a, y is just a union of the YN. But I want to, I want, I think you need something, I think that, that Y is a sw swiping set for X, which means that when I take Y and I look at the images of Y, the, all the forward images of Y contain X. Sorry? But this example is fine. So, okay, maybe, um, uh, okay, so here I'm saying I have a rotation and I induce it on this set IN, which is union of, this is my IN, it's the base of this picture is IN. And then I say, look, uh, look at the, what is the return time of my rotation on IN? The return time, we, we proved it yesterday, or it was part of the proof that we did yesterday, that when I induce, the induced map is an exchange of these two small intervals, and there are exactly two returns. One interval returns in time qn, the other interval returns in time qn minus one. And I'm just claiming that if you look at qn iterates of uh, one interval and qn minus one iterates of the other interval, these iterates are all disjoint up to their first return time. And the union is all the circle. But I will show you this. So this picture is basically, I can, I can show you the same picture on the circle. So these two towers are indeed the picture that we have been looking at at all time. So let me go forward maybe. Yes, so this is indeed the picture. So the red is one tower and the green is another tower. So just here I'm plotting the, the intervals are stacked up, upon each other in their dynamical sequence. Well, here they are somewhere in space. So this is exactly the picture that X is this union. So maybe we can even write it with some notation. So actually let me put some notation because I saw. So let's call, I don't know, let's call delta and I, delta and one, delta n, and delta and I is R alpha to the I of delta N. And the claim is that the circle, the whole circle is union the whole circle is the union from zero to QN minus one of delta N I union, this is one tower, this is say uh, the red, and then there is the union from zero to Q, sorry, this is QN minus one, minus one, and this is, is QN minus one of delta N minus one I. So this is another way to say this is the green. So, sorry? No, no, no. So, sorry, maybe that's what is confusing you now here. So, this n and that n are not related. This n is the return time. And this n, uh, this, I'm looking at level sets of the return time function. 
And here there are only two level sets which are non-trivial. The level set which corresponds to Qn and Qn minus one. There are only two heights, the, the, the n is like the height of the tower. And here there are only two towers with two heights. One has height Qn and one has height Qn minus one. So this n is not the same n. Okay, so this Qn is one of the n's and the Qn minus one is another n's. All the other ends contain nothing because nothing returns in uh, uh, another time. Okay, does it make sense? So, so I just want to say this: this, are, this picture that you see has this green are all intervals which are images of the original green, and the red are all images of the original n. And similarly here in the next level, in the next level again I have. Uh, my small green and my small red, and their images up to the return time together span the whole circle. And yet, sorry, and yet, uh, yet another one, I have only a small red and a small green in my induced map, but if I look at the images up to the time they come back here, the images of the red and the images of the green all together span, give you a partition of the circle. Does it make sense? I thought I'm confusing more people again. Okay, so, and th so this picture is the dynamical picture. So if I go from the, let's go in the previous one, there are also, so this green maps here, 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 and back. The red maps uh, here, then it jumps, then here, then here, then here, then it jumps to the next, and then it, it has a complicated, complicated dynamical structure. But in these simplified pictures of towers, I'm ignoring in which order they appear, and I'm kind of stuck in them in their natural order. Okay? So in this picture, the rotation actually moves up. So this floor is the image by the rotation of the previous, the next floor is the image, I'm pictorially draw, draw the images by the rotation on top of each other. So R alpha moves up. And uh, uh, up to the top. And then when I'm in the top, from this floor, I need to go back to the base according to the induced map. Then, Back to base by uh, the induced map uh, Tn. Okay. So this algorithm, this renormalization produces for you three things. It gives you an algorithm, a system of partitions, partitions of the circle into two intervals short and long intervals, and it gives you these dynamical Rocklin towers. And it's actually nice to also see what is the algorithm on the towers. So now I will do, it's a little bit boring to draw, it's a little bit uh, annoying to draw the floors. So let me draw a rectangle for a tower. So you should imagine that this rectangle has floors. But I will stop drawing the floors and just draw the rectangles. So we have two towers. Delta n is here, delta n minus one is here. And uh, uh, actually, sorry, let me make the second tower larger. Okay, so let me not draw all the floors. Okay? Uh, and again, this tower represents the dynamics. The dynamics, uh, the base, at the base I have the induced map. This is the induced map. And the original, so R alpha, uh, acts uh, by moving everything up and then coming back according to this map. So, is, I don't know, let me make a connection. Has anybody ever seen uh, 
finite trunk transformation and cutting and stacking. Okay, just one. <laughs> so this is a construction which is very much used to study many kind of sim dynamical systems. And uh, the dynamical, so as we saw in general, you can have uh, many towers, many Rockland towers, countably many, but dynamical systems which admit uh, representation with finitely many towers are sometimes called finite rank. So the rotation is an example of a rank two dynamical system because you can represent it as, two ta as a sequence of uh, towers. So, you need, okay. So this is just a, and the, the, the algorithm that we are going to, to see now on towers is actually an example of cutting and stacking. So many people in dynamics, in symbolic, and I mean actually in spectral theory, many areas use cutting and stacking. So this is, will be a special example of cutting and stacking. So I want to say, what are we doing on the base? Do you remember the algorithm of the base? On the base, what I'm doing, I'm taking this interval, a uh, small interval, and I cut it from the right as many times as I can. So this operation, I was doing it only on the base, but actually you can do it on the whole tower like this. So you can take the, the small tower and cut. So cut the small tower from the opposite side. So what does it mean? This small tower, I cut it here. Oh, I did too many copies because I'm not going to be able to stack it. Okay. <laughs> My example is too big, so let me make it a little bit smaller. <laughs> so I want it big, but not too big. So let me say that my tower is like this, so I cut actually, and let me cut for the reminder, I'm lying a little bit on the size. So I can cut three chunks of my tower of width equal width, and then I'm left with the uh, reminder. This is the reminder tower. Okay? Uh, cut uh, from opposite, uh, cut small tower from opposite side. So this is what I mean. I mean, uh, you know, the base was fitting a whole number of times before having a reminder, and I'm just cut. Yes? Do you have? No, 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 you're looking. Is it clear what I'm doing? I'm cutting my tower at the points where I was cutting the base. And now the algorithm is called cut and stack. Cutting and stacking. So what am I going to do next? I'm going to stack. I'm going to cut, and then I'm going to stack. So stack them all. Stack them on top of each other. Okay, so what am I going to do? I still have a small tower. I still have a reminder. So the small tower was blue. The reminder was red. And what am I doing? I'm kind of stacking. Uh, the first time that I cut, I wish I had a movie. I should have, uh, actually, no, I don't have a good movie. I cut a piece, I stuck it on top of, uh, sorry, I cut a piece, I stuck it on top of the small one. I cut the second, I stuck it on top. I, I'll draw you the picture. So let's call this is one, this is two, this is three, and this is a reminder. And I'm going to stack one, two, and three on top, okay? And now, what do they have? And I stack them in the, in the order in which I, I cut. I cut and stack. I cut and stack. I cut and stack. Uh, so let's actually check. So this height was Qn minus one. This height was Qn. How many towers do I cut? How many times can I cut? In terms of continuous fraction entries? Eh? 
a, a n. So I cut a n times because we did it yesterday. We checked maybe a n plus one. Sorry, a n plus one. Did you see anybody say a n plus one? Um, okay. So what is the new base and what is the new height? The new base is q uh, n plus one and q n. This height is the same that I had. It's still q n. What is the height of the big tower? The big tower has qn minus 1, which was the small tower, plus an plus 1 times the big tower, which was qn. So what is qn minus 1 plus an plus 1 plus Q, times qn? Everybody knows new dominion, new continuous fraction. This is qn plus 1. So you see this cutting and stacking gave me uh, um, uh, the, the picture at the next stage. So essentially this, so this is stage n, and this is stage n plus 1. And what you see, so this is a representation of the rotation, uh, the whole rotation on the whole space as an induced map on, uh, the inter on this interval i n, on the base. So this is how I see this union is the circle, and these dynamical towers show me how points move under the rotation. They move up until the first return map. This is also a representation of the rotation. So the union of these towers is still the whole circle. Well, I'm just cutting and stacking, so I'm just moving my intervals around, but I still have the whole circle. And here the induced map is the induced map on a smaller interval, and then giving a dynamical representation of how the rotation act as induced map on this uh, interval. So uh, to induce on this interval, I go out up to the height of these towers and then come back. And why does it work? Why this cutting and stacking? I'm doing nothing else than following the dynamics. Because if I start from the small blue, now we'll just look at it. If I start from the small blue, my rotation moves me up. And then where do I come back? Well, I have to go back according to the exchange. So I'm back here. Then my rotation moves me up. When I'm at the end of the first copy, my induced map moves me exactly here. So maybe I will do, uh, take a color like a yellow or a red. So my rotation, my dynamics is like this, up, 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 back here, up, 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 and then back here, up, 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 up back here, up, 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 back here, and that's it. So that's why I'm stacking, because stacking is following the dynamical movement, okay? So it's, uh, this, I mean, it, okay, I think I'm, so wait, did I start? When did I start and when I'm supposed to finish? I think I'm supposed to finish now. So this is a very concrete example in the case of rotation that you can build with your own hands, but it's really an example in dynamics that is used very often. This uh, cutting and stacking and this inducing are two fundamental tools in many, uh, the study of many dynamical systems. So we spent quite some time to, to do this cutting and stacking. And uh, so let me just tell you, tomorrow I want to give you some applications. So I will give you a hint of several results that you can uh, uh, use, you can prove giving, using this renormalization and cutting and stacking. I won't give you details, but I will give you a flavor. So, okay, so that's the plan for tomorrow. So thanks. Let's stop.